Okay, um, it's one o'clock, so we want to get going. And uh, I, good afternoon, and welcome to the 47th Caller Lab Convention in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today is Monday, April 11th, 2022, and this is the Utilizing a Website session. I am Brian Freed, and I will serve as the moderator for this session. Our panelists today are Ray Owen and myself, Brian Freed. Um, we do, we are being recorded, um, and so I ask that if you are going to ask a question, we will bring one of the microphones out to you and use your name and the state that you're from. Uh, we are going to get going here. Um, Ray and I have talked about this and we are going to kind of, I'm going to do part of it or I'm going to do a little bit here on domain names and then we are going to, I'm going to turn it over to Ray and he's going to talk a lot about design and then we can talk about uh, hosting if you have questions. So let's uh, start. There. Okay. As of March 2021, there were 1,589 TLDs. Now, we're going to talk about TLDs. That's a top level domain. For you, it's like the .com, the .net, the .org. There are, uh, as of, there are now two new ones that I, or at least one new one that I know of that Google came out with. <coughs> But, um, so that's just, that, that was our fun fact. Um, I did put in here, and by the way, this information is in your, in the handouts that are up on the Caller Web webs or on the uh, website for the convention. But the market share for .com is around 72.9%. .NET has a market share of 6.62, .org has a market share of 5.02, and then they went on and on, uh, you know, with a few other ones. Um, uh, .top had the largest market share of 1.74% uh, for the new uh, genetic. Uh, so just a little bit there, and now, Let's talk about this here. I guess I'll start by asking, how many of you have a website right now or have your domain name? Okay. Um, I've always said .com is best, and try for the first name, last name, like brianfreed.com or, you know, yourname.com. Um, if it is not available, then some other things that I found is you can look for other TLDs of uh, .NET. There is a .co. There is a .dance. There is a .party. Um, and I'm going to show you when you look up a domain to see if your domain name is available. It will give you suggestions um, on the site that we're going to go to. Um, one of the things that you can do is add caller or cure to your name, i.e. callerbrian.com. That is my website, brianfreed.com was taken when I created or when I uh, started calling, so we used Caller Brian. Um, you can use caller or cure after your name, uh, you know, like brianfreedcaller.com. Um, Consider using your city or your state, uh, Minnesota, mncaller.com or bloomingtoncaller.com or cacaller.com if you're from California. And now we're going to talk about this here. You can do a Google search for or search for domain name registers and you will probably come up with about a, you know, a million of them. There, there are a lot of them out there. Uh, GoDaddy is the largest out there. I personally like Moniker or Dynadot, and I'll tell you why here in a little bit, why I like them. 
Most registrars will give you a discount on your first year, but I would say check their uh, renewal prices, and you can do, you can uh, register a domain name from one to ten years. Um, okay, let's uh, let me do this. Okay, um, I, this is Moniker, and um, when you, you can type in what you want and hit search. And when we typed in for brianfreed.com, I mean it shows that brianfreed is taken, or brianfreed.com is taken, brianfreed.net is taken, um, I own brianfreed.net, but then they will give you a, they will give you um, some other suggestions. And if, as we scroll down, and they will also give you your pricing. And now, We just have to, uh, this is, um, um, the Welcome to the 47th Caller Convention in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is Monday, April 11th, and this is the Utilizing a Website uh, session. I am Brian Freed, and I am the moderator, and our panelists today are Ray Owen and Brian Freed. Now, continuing on, um, as you can see, you get a lot of choices, and there are a lot of different pricing. So, you know, just kind of keep, you know, keep that in mind, um, and Ray can maybe help me out because I think I have seen renewal prices up to about $2,500 a year, depending on which top level domain you pick. So you, um, it's just something to keep in mind. So um, I guess, are there any questions up to this point? And then we are going to go, I'm gonna turn this over to Ray and we're gonna unplug my, um, my computer, we're gonna plug in his and he is gonna continue with, uh, with his part of it. Yes, Mike. Mike Cease from California. Brian, how do you keep from all of a sudden your domain name goes up and of course we all get the mail about, you know, this domain and it's not really legitimate and that kind of thing. How, how do we handle all that? Well, um, a lot of it is, there are rules out there now, okay? In other words, if somebody tried to register Mike Seastrom dot net, you would probably get an email saying, hey, somebody did do this. Um, there are, back when they started, it was kind of, it was sort of a wild west, okay? Somebody, if somebody had, and I'll just use this as the example, if somebody had, um, you know, if you had MikeSeastrom.com, well, somebody could register MikeSeastrom.net and put up stuff about you without your permission. It was allowed. Okay, there were there were issues. Nowadays, there are trademarks. You know, basically your name can you know is trademarked. So you're gonna you get to say, hey, I don't want this. And I mean, there there are different there are some ways that you can go about that to do it. Um, the big thing is, and I will say this: if you are going to have a domain name, and I've run into this with I've run into this with some different people. 
When you register your domain name, you can do one of two things. You can place a credit card on file with the registrar, which is what I recommend. Just be sure to change it when your credit card expires. You maybe want to just do 10 years, you know, off the, off the bat, and then you don't have to worry about it. If your domain name expires, you have 30 days to register it. After 30 days, it goes into a pool, and there are, I get emails every day about expired domain names, and there are an awful lot of first name, last names, you know, somebody forgot, either forgot to do it, their credit card expired, they didn't see the email. Um, when you register a domain name, I always say, you could have up to uh, two or three different emails to get notifications. One of those should be, uh, for an example, I have Brian at callerbrian.com is my main calling one. But I also have a backup, and that is what I call my personal email, which is free at usfamily.net. I get notifications about my domain name to free at usfamily.net. It's a nice backup because if your website ever goes down, you are not going to get notifications. So you know, if you've got like a, you know, like an AOL or a you know, Google or G, you know, Gmail or something like that, it's always best to have backup. Um, so, is, did I answer your question? Um, you, you know, you can tell um, a lot of times there are, I mean, out there, there's a lot of people who will put, uh, you know, a website that it looks like it, but it isn't. And, you know, you can usually, you can hover over any name and maybe Ray will show us how to do that. Um, you can hover over um, a link and it will tell you where it's going and whether or not, I mean, if it's going to, if you hover over a link for me and it says, you know, callerbrian.com, well, that's where it's going. If it's, you know, if it's long, if it's saying something else, then it's not. Yeah, I was just saying, I, I get mail that comes from Las Vegas or whatever, and it'll say your domain name is expiring, and and, and would you say, and, 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 and in the past I've had some that's not legitimate, um, the best thing to do then was go to your your provider, say GoDaddy, if you're with GoDaddy. Yes, um, you will get, there are two ways, and one of the things, and we can certainly talk about this if you want, you can set your privacy settings. Now, usually there is a small charge per year, but you can set your privacy settings of your name, of, of the contact information for your domain name to private, which means, you know, I can't go in and see who owns my, maybe I can't go in and see, um, I could go up to a website and probably tell you know who owns what there is a website out there that lists but it's public information you can also set your settings to private and then it won't show up it will just say you know private there is a way to contact but for me to contact you about your website I would have to go through your provider I would have to send them an email and then they would in turn forward it on to you. You will also have, and Mike, I don't know if you've ever gotten, um, you got people that have websites. I get in the mail, you know, a few times a year. Hey, did you know Brian, you know, callerbrian.com is about to expire? You need to renew it. Well, it's just from, because I have, I, I have, my, my information is public. And so, you know, they, they can look up, they see, you know, what my mailing address is, and they send me this thing. And so the only thing I would, if, is to know what, where it's registered. And if you get something from GoDaddy, you know, for instance, that it's, if yours is registered at GoDaddy, and you, you will get something from GoDaddy probably 45 to 60 days before it expires and they will say one of two things your domain name is about to expire you know within it will tell you the date um, 
most of them say if you have funds on available or a credit card on file, we will charge your card on this date. Usually it is 15 days before, um, it is usually charged 15 days before your name expires. Um, if you do not have a credit card on file, well then, then you need to go in there and you can, you know, there's, it's a simple way. They will provide you probably with a direct link in their email. Hey, click here, you're gonna go up to your, you know, to GoDaddy or wherever it's registered. You're gonna click, yes, I wanna renew it. Here's my credit card info and, you know, click send and it's good for another year. Or you can choose, like I said, you can go up to 10 years. So if you don't want the hassle of doing every year, then choose multiple years. So, okay. Um, are there any other questions about domain names? Okay, I would like to introduce Mr. Ray Owen. He is uh, the owner of a company called Square Dance Tech, which he is gonna talk about. And he's gonna talk about uh, websites and, uh, and uh, how to create one, and what's important about having, or about A, having one, and B, what kind of content you should have. Thank you, Brian, I appreciate it. Uh, for those of you who are wondering who the heck I am, my name is Ray Owens. I'm not a caller, uh, I'm a web designer. About six months ago, Ted Lazat said, hey, why don't you come and share some of what you do with our folks here at the Color Lab Convention, so that's why I'm here. Now this topic is gonna to be about web design, but I'm not gonna bore you with the nuts and bolts about how to upload a picture or you know, how, to, how to change the format of a file or anything like that. Instead, let's go with the basic supposition that to do business in the 21st century, the bottom line is you have to have a website about it. Just like a microphone, just like speakers, a website is nothing more than another tool for a caller to move forward in your career. I'm going to suggest what I think are some important design elements that each caller website should contain. If you already have a website, we'll consider these suggestions as how they may be incorporated into your existing website. If you don't have a website, when you find a website developer to do something for you, incorporate these suggestions into your website. It's gonna seem like I'm paying a lot of attention to Google, and it's not that I'm a big fan of Google, I'm really not. I think they have a lot of privacy issue concerns and all, but unfortunately, they are the 800 pound gorilla in the room, okay? On the internet, search is everything, and Google is the undisputed champ of search. So everything, pretty much we do, we gotta do with an eye on Google. Search is important, because you can spread the existence of your website by word of mouth, which is the, the best way, but by some simple design techniques, you can have the computers do a lot more efficient job of getting word out about your website, and be listed much higher on the search rankings than you would with a simple word of mouth. Being higher the search rankings is important because most people never go beyond page two when they do a search. If your website shows up on page three or four or 25, forget it, you're, you're invisible as far as that concern. And even if your website shows up on page one, unless you are the top listing, the number one listing, there's a bias built into search results. People will automatically think that this site listed above this site is better. And that's not true, but it is the bias that goes along with the search rankings and everything. So all that out of the way, let's get started. First of all, your site needs to be developed for mobile devices. A few years ago, the internet traffic passed 50% as being accessed by a mobile device. Today, it's closer to 60%. 60% of the traffic on the internet is done with the cell phone. Uh, I read a recent report that Facebook alone, 80% of their traffic is by a mobile device. So the next generation of dancers we are actively trying to recruit, they live on their cell phones. They do everything. They never stop looking at the damn things. But they're always looking at their cell phone and they access everything through cell phone. 
So when you design your site, make sure to keep an eye on what it looks like on a small device. It's the same thing that the recording artists used to have to go through. We got rid of the LPs and we went to <laughs> cassette tapes. You got smaller real estate you have to deal with. Google also, back to Google, they've recently changed their search algorithms where if your site is not mobile friendly, they'll downgrade you on the search listings and stuff. They'll drop you down some. If you include just one tool on your website, make sure it's a calendar, all right? In my opinion, the calendar is the single most important tool for letting dancers know where and when you're calling. As a dancer, there are a number of callers I keep an eye on. All things considered, I got no problem hopping in the car and driving two hours to somebody who I really want to dance to. If a caller has an up-to-date calendar, that makes it easier for me as the dancer to find out when and where they're calling and making that quote-unquote buying decision to go see them. Now, this is, an, I didn't know this website. This is, this is a, a Miami Valley Dance Council down in Dayton, Ohio. This is their embedded club calendar, and they use Google Calendar. Google has benefit, it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere, it's relatively easy to install on a website, but let me tell you about a tool that I like a lot better. It's called TeamUp. It is free, all right? It's a calendaring service that I think beats Google hands down, all right? Let me show you, this is my website in Columbus, Ohio, <clears throat> my Columbus Square Dance site. And for every website that I build that needs a calendar, I use TeamUp to do it. For one thing, and this is subjective, I'll give you that, I think it's easier to read. I think the font, let me see if I can blow the font up just a little bit. Nope, can't, sorry. <laughs> but I think it's easier to read. There are things like different uh, lists that you can look, a scheduler, a six day list, a week, all of this is available to the end user, so that way they can look at the calendar the way that makes the most sense for them. The data stays the same, that's just the views that change. Me personally, I kind of like the agenda and list views myself, but that doesn't mean that somebody, you know, doesn't, hey, I want to see where everything is going on this month. There you go. And then they can look at that, and again, I'm not changing any of the data, it we're just changing the way the data is viewed on there. Now there's some advantages that uh, TeamUp has uh, over Google. For one thing, <laughs> oddly enough, ironically, their search function is better than Google's search function. I can search for anything that I wanted to on here, any text string that I put in there, it'll find it in, in whatever date range that I want. So if I'm looking for a specific caller in all of those calendars and stuff, it'll find them without any problem whatsoever. Let me close that out. <coughs> Uh, with less people attending classes and, 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 uh, and lessons and dances and stuff after the pandemic, TeamUp has a built-in sign-up function. I'm going to pick on this first one right here. That little black flag tells me there's a sign-up function. So if I click that and hit sign up, I can put in my name and my email address. Then that way you know how many people are coming to your dance. So if you've got a minimum number, if we don't have a square, We'll get hold everybody and we'll you know, cancel the dance. Or maybe you have the opposite problem. Maybe you have a room that you only get four squares or something. You get five squares of people coming. This sign up function comes in well on that. And again, it's incorporated in Team Up. There's no extra thing to it. Google calendars can't touch that. Uh, I have a friend of mine, uh, Ken Burke, he's a caller uh, down out of Tennessee. Using Team Up, I can build a rudimentary booking calendar for him. So an end user can come along and click on this, enter their, you know, their, their date, who the contact information is, and then when they save that, that information goes to Ken, and then he can approve and contact the person. And so, you know, there doesn't have to be a lot of phone calls back and forth and everything. This also is built into Team Up and everything. And every bit of this is free, all right? The Columbus Square Dance site, I use a paid version where I get up to 50 sub calendars. The free version comes with eight, and I haven't run across a caller yet that needs more than eight sub calendars. <laughs> I mean, you can put events, classes, special events, club dances, you know, you'll run out of them before you run out of eight sub calendars and everything. They can be color coded like I have here. So, again, if you're going to go with one tool of your calendar, stick a calendar on. 
When someone comes to your site, they're obviously looking for information. You should have everything that you can think of on that website. When I, when I build a business website, the only question I want the visitor to ask is, how do I get you money? <laughs> how, when would you like my money? You should put every bit of information out there that they are going to reasonably want to ask. Now, every once in a while, somebody's going to come up with a question that you cannot possibly anticipate, okay? So, you got to have a contact list on there. I'm not a big fan of putting email addresses, naked email addresses on a website. Too many spam scrapers will come along and take those up and you'll spend the rest of your life trying to get off all these spam lists. So, use a contact form. They're relatively easy to do. It will not show the email address, even to the robots and stuff that go through and do it. It just goes blind to you and stops most of the spam that way. Make sure the contact list is nice and, and bold in here. You know, that anywhere on their website that you happen to be, that contact list is right there on the main menu. The contact form itself, pretty simple. Name, email, phone number, what do you want to say, all right? I throw in a, an anti-spam question in there too because there are some robots that are smart enough to figure out the forms because it says name and phone and all that, so you get all that kind of stuff, but robots can't do math. A human can figure out what eight minus seven is, but a robot can't. So if there's any other answer other than a one in that box, the computer just simply deletes it. They're a spam bot and you never see that kind of stuff. Right? Make sure that the form is set up to send the recipient an immediate response so that they know you're taken care of them, that you got their email, you'll get back to them as soon as you can. If you're going to put a contact phone number on the contact list, eh, I'm kind of iffy about that. Older dancers want to call people, younger dancers want to text people, you know, just the way it is. But if you put a phone number on here, you notice my little arrow changes from an arrow to a hand. If I was on a mobile device, if I clicked on that phone number, it would open up my phone app so that I could call directly without having to copy the phone number or anything out there. By the way, on a related subject, one of my pet peeves, speaking of email, is when folks have a website and they still continue to use Gmail or Hotmail or, God forbid, Yahoo or <laughs> AOL as your primary email address, you have a domain. Use that, mike at mikeseastern.com, should be your email address, okay? Not mike at yahoo.com. That's a sign of digital sophistication that you're using your own domain to send and receive emails and everything. You can, you can, you can reply from your Yahoo address if you want, I don't care, but use your own domain to send and deliver email. All right, if a picture is worth a thousand words and video's gotta be worth, I don't know, a million maybe, Invest in a tripod. If somebody's not already taking a video of you at every event you call, go get a tripod, take your cell phone, mount it on that bad boy, and point it at yourself, and record every dance that you're doing. Because potential people that want to hire you, especially if you're relatively newer in the industry, so those folks looking to hire you, they can come and actually watch you at work. This is Jack Dyson. This was a turkey run that he and Tony just did recently. But I, I do all of Jack's website stuff. I took all of these videos. I post them to YouTube on a playlist. And I can come out here, the 98 videos, and click on that little hamburger icon. And people can go and see his whole video history. Right? The web is a visual medium. Give them something to look at. You don't want to tell your story. You want to show your story. Okay? So... Make sure that you've got somebody, if, if, even if it's just yourself, going through and taking videos of every performance that you're doing. Uh, Ryan touched on domain names, but I'm going to go a little different direction. Okay? Domain names should be a marketing aspect. As Brian suggested, the best domain to get is your name. RayOwens.com would be perfect for me if I was a caller but rayos.com is already taken or so. So, even if you have mikeseastrom.com, if you already have that domain, there's nothing stopping you from having other domains and have them point to your website, all right? So back to marketing, and I, I, I looked at the video, sexiestcaller.com is available, all right? I looked up about 60 of these the other day, worldsgreatestcaller.com, 
okay? Best caller on earth, smartest caller, best looking caller, hottest chick dot caller. All of those are available right now, and they run about, in this case, $19.99 for a year's registration. Um, Jack Platties has a, uh, an annual event called the General Butler Bash. I think Jack should get I'm senior to generalbutler.com, you know, and run with that. The best part of having domains like this is your audience's reaction when you tell them, I'm the sexiest caller. It's on the internet, must be true. Right? <laughs> I have a t-shirt that I made up for myself as a dancer that says, I'm the third sexiest dancer on this floor. Now, if I had just put, I'm the sexiest dancer, people roll their eyes at my fat thing. <laughs> and, they, and they wouldn't, but the third sexiest? Well, that becomes a conversation starter. Inevitably, I get asked, well, who are the top two? I generally say we're still counting the votes in Florida, but we'll know someday. <laughs> And then I tell him, imagine if I came in third, the guy came in fourth, what poor bastard he is. <laughs> but the conversation started. So consider that you want to get something like the third sexiest caller, or the fourth smartest caller, or the fifth best hair. I don't know. You know, those kind of things. Because your audience will remember that. The dancers will remember that because just like you guys just did, you laughed. And you're going to remember that. And your audience will too. So use it as a marketing piece. And Ray, I should, I can add, I also own, I mean, A, I've got BrianFree.net, I have uh, MNCaller.com, I have um, Square Dance Richfield, which is where our club, our club dances in Richfield, Minnesota. I have Square Dance Richfield and Square Dance Bloomington, which is the next call over. And they all point to my website. You can you can forward a domain name to a diff, to another existing website. Okay, the next thing, and it's maybe the most subjective thing I'm gonna talk about, make your website visually appealing. Again, the web is a visual medium. You guys are our rock stars. I'm a dancer. I'm not a caller. I'm a dancer. You guys are our rock stars. You guys are the ones that you get up on the stage and you put us in these amazing mental and physical puzzles and, and then you sing your ass off after that. You know, and then you come off the stage going, yeah, I could have done that with my eyes closed. I mean, you're just not <laughs> sure. To us dancers, though, you're bigger than life. You're the entertainer. Okay? We, <laughs> we giggle like 14-year-old schoolgirls when you have us so confused in the square, and the two calls later, there's our partner, we're doing right, let's grab. Holy hell, how'd they do that, okay? So use that on your websites. Make yourself larger than life. Uh, let me show you some examples. This is my buddy Jason Raleigh in Columbus. As you can tell, he's just, he's just all over this page here, all right? It's, it faces up front, uh, it glides in nice. Down here below, we've got a, a highlight reel of all his videos and stuff that I edited together for him. Uh, I love his his uh, little coda here. Good callers don't yo. Well, great callers do. I love that. <laughs> uh, Tony Oxidine. I'm Tony's webmaster. Okay? Just like that. If you see in the background here, it says Tony Oxidine. You can't get away from that. It's as big and it's in your face and everything. Not like Tony needs more promotion, but... <laughs> Buddy Weaver, all right, on Buddy's website. Buddy, literally on his website here, is larger than life. You cannot get away, no matter what page I go to on Buddy's site, there he is staring at me, all right? Everywhere he goes, he's bigger than life on this page. That's what your website should look like. Business sites sell products. On your website, you're the product. Don't be shy, don't be demure. If you're not gonna promote yourself, who else is? Listen to me telling the ego <laughs> If you need some inspiration, if, if you want to rebuild your site, it's not something like this, go take a look at some of the, the country and western stars. Go look at Alan Jackson. Okay, go look at Reba McIntyre. Go look at, uh, well, anybody out there. I mean, here's Alan Jackson's site. Look at him. <clears throat> Bigger than life. You know, I'm here. I'm confident. I got my picture. Here's my tour dates. Here's my schedule and everything. I'm king of the world. That's what your website should be because 
that's the way we dancers view you guys as the entertainer, the confident, all-knowing person that's going to lead me to a good time every time I come to see you. Right? Now, let me tell you an Alan Jackson story, my guys. <laughs> I'm on the uh, committee for the Evansville Convention coming up uh, in a couple months. And uh, there's a lot of Alan Jackson songs that have been covered uh, uh, square dancing wise. And I thought, what would be kind of cool Saturday night, 8 o'clock, if we get Alan Jackson to stop by and actually sing one? Have a caller in his earpiece or something tell him what to say? You know what Alan Jackson charges for something like that? $400,000. Yeah, about what Ryan makes every time he calls. <laughs> Garth Brooks is a million, just to let you know, but uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Any, any questions? Uh, I must have covered it all. all there, okay, well, thank you. Um, and then we're going to, we would, um, we can uh, go up on the internet, we can show you hosting. Um, there are as many domain registers, there's probably as many hosting companies out there. Uh, once again, GoDaddy is probably the largest. Um, I personally prefer a company called HostGator. Uh, they have excellent customer service. Their, tech, uh, their customer service is not to be believed. Of course, it's 24-7, and you can connect with them online, and they can pretty much fix anything with one visit. Um, I guess, I'm sure Ray probably does the same thing I do. I have a private server that I rent that I host, you know, different websites for organizations or, or for a few callers. So, but take and do some price comparison. Uh, on a website, you, for hosting, you are going to pay, if you consider a web server to be this room, you are going to pay for whatever part of the room that you need. Um, and there are some, some people do limit, you know, how much space you can have within the room. Uh, some do not. And um, almost every uh, hosting company out there will um, provide you, they provide you with a, you don't need any, you know, uh, you don't need any programming knowledge to create a website. GoDaddy is, you know, is one. HostGator has the other. Most of them do. Uh, and I can tell you, I know Ray uses the same thing. When I have designed every website except for two that I have uh, are all used on a platform called WordPress and WordPress um, we can go up uh, that matter of fact Square Dance Tech I do believe is a WordPress site oh yeah um, they have literally a hundred thousand different templates you can use some are free some are some you have to pay for uh, but they have more um, I can show you, uh, he was talking about, um, can you go up to callerbryan.com and um, this is actually my website. Um, I have a, a slideshow with different things up there. That was me calling with a band in uh, Wisconsin. Uh, and then the one thing I have on mine is I have my calendar. My calling schedule is on the home page. Uh, so, and this is just one of many. Uh, yes, I use Google. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you. So, but, um, and the nice thing is, is you can change. Um, I wish I had my, uh, I wish I had my uh, login info I don't uh, with me. Um, I could show you, you could change your the look of your website by using different parts of so you know once a year you could go through and you could change your website you can change the color you can change how it looks um, and then that's what you need to do because people want to 
they want fresh content. Okay, they don't. I will tell you the truth. There are there is one caller out there. He has information on his website from 2018. I will not tell you who it is, but it is out there. Um, I had one. I once saw a caller that had, and this is a couple of years ago. He had he had information about a dance that he was doing in 2013, and this was like 2018 when he when it was there. Uh, if you are not going to do it yourself, if you don't, if you can't do it, if you don't have the time, then pay somebody to do it. Uh, it's probably well worth the money because you're not. Uh, the one thing that will turn people off is um, is to so, see old information about if I'm going up to Mike and I Mike I haven't I don't know if I've ever been to your website but you're here and I'll I guess I I'll pick on you if I go up to Mike's website to see where he's calling and I see something for um, you know that hey you know. Uh, I'm calling here in 2020. I'm not going to like that. But if I see this that says, okay, um, he's got, uh, let's see, his caller web speech is up there, I know. And, you know, I mean, so that I can find out where you're calling. Some callers, I have noticed, will not put up their calendar. Uh, personally, I will because I want you to come to my dances. Are there any other questions? Meet you halfway. Sure. Oh. Uh, Mike Prescott from Alaska. Um, what are your thoughts on the use of embedded maps to show people where area events are located? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, especially when it comes to the mobile devices, they're the first thing I mentioned and everything. Yeah, the embedded map, it's just a matter of clicking on it and it opens up the map app on the phone. Absolutely have a map on there. I, uh, Rivco out in uh, India, I think, Mike, you, you call it. I, I went round and round with the powers that be in building their website. They didn't want a map. And I'm going, I will, I will just abandon the project if we don't put a damn map on there. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Maps make sense. It's just as necessary as a calendar for everything. For sure. And when. Not that y'all would be doing a lot of this. Uh, let me get over here real quick and see if, if I know what I'm talking about. That would be a first. Um, I, in listings of clubs or organizations you belong to, I, I would I would make these linkable where their address is, like that, the Gahanna Community Church, and then that should open up a Google map for it. So absolutely, uh, in that team up calendar that I was talking about, there's a location, and all you have to do is put the address in there, and Team Up will automatically link it to a Google Calendar for you. So, yes, absolutely do that kind of stuff. Are there any other questions or comments? If not, I guess we, oh. Gordon Patton from Pennsylvania, and I wondered if at some point in these discussions we should say, should I have a Facebook page instead of a website? What are the advantages of that or not? Is that going to be in another session, or do we cover that here? If you come to my session tomorrow at 2.30, we'll talk about Facebook. We're going to talk about that. Okay. For the, for the most part, though, I'm not a Facebook fan for the same reason I'm not a Google fan. Facebook is also the 800-pound gorilla in the room, and most of our current dancers, most of our next generation of dancers are on Facebook, so that's where they are. So, in my opinion, take the meat and potatoes of the messages that you want to pass out, put them on your website, and link to them from Facebook. So that you're always getting the, all of your information in one location, your website, and not Facebook. So that's just my opinion on Facebook. Do you have any thoughts on backing up your website in case uh, we ever had things crash? The web server or the the hosting company that I use is a company called SiteGround, and I'm trying to find a link for them right quick. Uh, SiteGround 
I, I have the ultimate package with them because I, I monitor about 60 different websites that I build. SiteGround does all my backups for me, but I also have two other services just in case. And I back up my key sites, such as a Weave the Rain, my Columbus Square Dance site, the ones that I absolutely cannot afford to have go down for a second. Uh, so yes, absolutely, backups are absolutely necessary. Okay, are there any other questions? Or If not, we would like to thank you for calling. We hope you will uh, rate us well on your, uh, on your sheet. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Greg, you think tomorrow on digital marketing? I am, at 2.30, right back here. 10.30. 10.30. Did they change it? I'm looking at the schedule in the book. Maybe you're supposed to be someplace else at 2.30. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's some guy that I know and love who built this digital thing. <laughs> yeah, and, and is that where it is? It, it's just out when I'm <laughs> Oh, God, it's 10.30. I have to get up. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, we'd like you to be here. Yeah, I, I, yeah, if I show up at 2.30, I'm probably going to pick somebody off. So, yeah, I'll be here at 10.30. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good thing you came to this one so you could find out. I know. I know. You learn all kinds of things in this place, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the correction on that. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Okay. She's going to be like this. It was fun. Thank you. Oh yeah, sitting there with the two three.